So the next method we're going to use or learn about is the finite volume method. In the book they call it the control volume approach. I'm not sure why, but they do. And so this, uh, we're going to introduce this by contrasting it with the finite difference method. So if we show the finite difference, finite difference method over here, and the finite volume method over here, we, we see the difference. Okay, so in the finite difference method, we actually use the values at every one of the nodes. So if we're going to compute the value at this node, uh, we use the value at this node, the value at this node, well, we use the value at this node, this node, this node, and this node, actually. Um, but anyway, so so that's what we do in the finite difference approach, and we're um, and we're, we're calculating the temperature at each point, okay? Uh, in the finite, and, and we do it by substituting directly in uh, for the second derivative of temperature with respect to time. Well, excuse me, with respect to x or, or with respect to y. Well, in the finite volume method, instead of doing it at each node uh, like this and, and just doing it at separate nodes, what we do in the finite volume approach is we actually use an entire section, okay, and then we calculate the flux across this section. And we use the value of one edge for the next edge. And so the nice thing about doing it this way is that it anything that you lose out of one side, you gain in the other one. And so it, it's sort of it's sort of really good at conserving, um, conserving the 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 heat flow like like it should be. So that's that's one advantage of the finite volume approach. Um, uh, the, the second thing that we should consider before we get into the details is what is the advantage of the finite volume approach? Like why would we want to to use this instead of the finite difference method? Well, in the book they give a nice little example where you have uh, something that you're trying to do and you have a whole bunch of nodes over here and they're spaced out on one spacing and then uh, and we can draw this in in perhaps a different color and then you have a whole bunch of nodes over here and those are are spaced out in a totally different spacing maybe uh, maybe it's twice the spacing here we'll try to draw lines really close together uh, and you're supposed to deal with this well in the finite difference method, it's it can be a little bit hard, um, but in the finite volume approach, it, it's not as bad. And this is supposed to be the same number of horizontal lines. Okay, so uh, and then the other thing is you may have you may even have different boundary conditions. So uh, let's say this is insulated, and uh, and then this other instead of being insulated, we have convection. So this is this is sort of a, a more challenging situation, and it turns out that to to solve it with a finite difference method is really hard, <laughs> um, because you really have to do some tricky derivation. And the finite volume approach ends up being a little bit easier uh, for this type of a problem. All right. Well, so now let's get into the approach a little bit. So for this, we're gonna here. Let me write it here. We're going to zoom in on a point right in here, on an area right in here, so we can see what's going on, and that's that's what we're going to deal with. So let's say uh, when we zoom in on it, it looks something like this. So we had the one material over here, uh -huh, just like this, and we have uh, the spacing that we have there, and then we have another material over here. And we have twice the spacing in the vertical direction. And the point that we're looking at is right at this point. Okay, so when we do the finite volume approach, we are going to uh, chop out the entire volume right here around this node. And we're going to go in, we're going to go, so if this is. Let's get some things down here. So let's call this H. This is also going to be 
h, that means this, this is h over 2, and so the distance out here that we're going to go, that's going to be h over 4 because we only want to go half the distance of this node, and then this will be h over 2, and then this height, I'll just dot line that out, that will be h over 2 as well. And then what we have, let me just draw it, so uh, we have heat flow in, in all possible directions. So, so first we've got heat coming in here, it's also coming, and, and it could be going either way, but we don't really lose generality. We've got heat coming in here, uh, we've also got heat coming in here, and we might treat that differently because it's a different method, so it, or it's a different material, so it might come in differently. Uh, and then we have heat coming out here. Uh, then we also have heat going out here. I'm just going to draw it right over the top of that. We've got heat coming out there, and we could say, oh, we have heat coming out here. Well, we don't have heat coming out there because, remember, that is insulated. So we don't have any heat coming out here, and the heat that's coming out here, this follows the law of convection. Okay, so so uh, what we've got to do then is is write out the equation. So we can say 0 is equal to everything coming in here plus what's coming in here plus what's coming here minus what's going out here minus what's going out here so let's let's formalize, formalize that uh, a little bit let's so uh, say left i'm going to say left in i know not very formal left in um minus right out uh, plus, um, I'm going to say uh, the lower left, lower left in, plus lower right in, and then we have a minus, a minus top out. And that's only acting over uh, a smaller area. Okay, great. Um, so let's start looking at each one of these parts. The first part that we can look at is um, is the left-hand side in. And I don't know if I mentioned this. So this is material A, and this over here is material B. Uh, the next thing we need to do is is have names for all of these nodes uh, because we're going to use values at the nodes and. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually just use uh, the names uh, that they use in the book uh, for their examples. That's, that'll keep it easy and it'll give you a reference that you can look at. So the node that we're operating on, they're calling node 4, 2, which means seems really odd. They, given their coordinate system, it should be 2, 4, but we'll be consistent uh, with what they say. The, the next node that they have, that this, this element doesn't come all the way to that node, but the next, no, the next closest node is node 4, 3, and the node before is node, put an arrow there, this is node 4, 1. Okay, great. Um, Again, I, I don't know why they're using the second one. Normally the first one is the x direction, but hey, um, just keep that in mind. We just use the named nodes that they use because it doesn't matter. Uh, and then this would be, so we just gotta, we got to name this one too, I think. This is 3, 2. Now, again, odd naming convention, but if we just use their names, uh, then we'll be okay. So the first thing we have is conduction. So for conduction, it, it follows Fourier's law, which says that, um, that Q is equal to negative K uh, times our area, uh, times our change in um, times D, well, we just use a delta, delta T over um, whatever our, our unit is. I'm going to use an H just because it, it just, it's whatever our region is, whether it's a delta X or a delta Y. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, that's it. So 
that's what we have to do. Um, so let's do left in. So left in. Uh, so that's going to be uh, given by Q equals negative K A. So I'm going to use A because this is material A prime times uh, T for two for two minus T for one all over H and then our area is H over two times our delta Z. Well I'll just I'll just write it as delta Z. That's the thickness. So uh, all right, so a couple of things here. Why do we use an H in the denominator? Well, the distance between the 4, 2 node and uh, the 4, 1 node is, um, is H. That's that total distance between here and here. So it's H, and, um, and then we have to multiply it by the area. So this H over 2 delta Z. Uh, that's our area. So we're good. So that's the left the left side in. Now let's look at the right out. Right out. So that's going to actually be very similar. Um, it's just going to be um, Q equals minus K, but instead of material A, it's going to be material B, K, B, and then it'll be T, um, what temperatures are we going to? We're going to use 4, 3 minus 4, 2. 4, 3 minus T, 4, 2 over our H. But our H in this case, the distance here is, is actually H over 2, where before we had this whole distance here, that was H. Now we have this distance here, which is H over 2. H over 2 times... Um, um, H over 2 delta Z. Now the two bottom nodes coming in uh, is just the same thing but let's so so let's just give a little bit of attention to this convection term um, the convection term going out here so let's say top out all right well, uh, instead of being governed by this law, um, Fourier's law here, that's conduction, conduct, conduction. Um, we have convection, and the relationship that we're going to use uh, for convection is going to be Q equals H, and I'm going to call it C um, times the ambient temperature minus the temperature uh, of interest. Okay, so um, that's going to be the relationship for convention. So now when we write this uh, for the top out, we have Q equals HC TA minus T and uh, the point that we're interested in uh, for this is T42. That's right at this point. And um, that's it for the out. So uh, with just this information, um, we can write it. Uh, we can write the terms out uh, for for everything. Actually, sorry. There's one thing I one thing that I was forgetting here. We we also have to do our h over four delta z on on this term as well uh, because. Um, well, because it has to be similar to these other ones, we have to we have to multiply it um, by the area over which it's operating, of course. So that's it. Um, I, I think that's as far as we need to take this example. Um, just prevent it from getting too long, and, and just make sure that you can focus on the point. So the finite volume method, as opposed to the finite difference method, we're actually using uh, a set uh, volume, and we're looking at the flow. The heat flow in and out of this uh, of of this volume. We showed a little example where we did it at the top, and the nice thing about this is we can deal with different materials and everything like that. Well, 
uh, and it, it just so happens that uh, for these other nodes we just had in the inside of a plate or something like this, it actually just ends up being exactly the same, uh, but it's just sometimes easier for us to deal uh, with, with special conditions.